It's usually pretty self-evident what technology will do for you. A more interesting question and more germane is, what's it going to do to me? How's it going to change society? How's it going to change my life? How's technology going to impact me? I think the lines between content consumer and content creator are now blurred. And the currency has changed. The whole new Web 2.0 world, everything that we talk about from Facebook right through, it's all about collaboration. It's all about the content consumer and the content publisher are one and the same. Sometimes when you visit a blog, you're a reader. Sometimes you're a publisher and you're commenting back on it. And so here's the thing, our kids live in this world now and don't think of social networking, don't think of it as a thing, think of it as a place. Because it is a place that we go to, it's a place where interaction happens. That's one of the keys to understand about social networking, is it's a place where kids go. And in that place, we all need to be. Because it, I liken social networking sites to building a big gymnasium for your school and building a huge gymnasium right attached to the school that no, no adults have to go into. It's kids can go in there, they can go in there on their own if they want, and they can spend two, three, four hours a day, and we're pretty sure it's okay, because it's, it's in the society. I mean, somebody's watching it, right? But it's nobody's job to go in there. It's nobody's job to police, it's nobody's job to check. See, we had our time of awkwardness. It was called high school, <laughs> right? Or early adulthood, or well into my 40s for me. But it was, we had a time when we, were, when, when, when we did go to the school dance and wear the funny shirt and thought everybody was laughing at us. Because they were laughing at us. And we didn't like that. And now that we're adults, we're confident in the world, we don't like that feeling of not understanding the rules anymore. So we don't engage in that process. We don't, and, 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 and we were in a conversation and he said, I don't let my kids chat. We were talking about MSN and chat. He has two daughters, like 14 and 16 years old. He says, I don't allow them to use chat. And I said, you don't, why not? And he said something so compelling, I said, I have to repeat it. He says, because I want them to have real relationships. When we were kids and we were dating on the phone, was that real? When you wrote, when Second World War soldiers wrote letters back and forth to their loved ones, was that real? We use the technology that's available to us to form relationships, and it doesn't matter if it's text messaging, or chatting, or writing, or phone, or face-to-face. -face. The relationship is just as real, and we can't deny the reality of the emotions, the reality of the impact, how real a relationship is, just because it happens to happen on a little screen on a, on a cell phone. And it, we always think about the risks that our students face online as being predators and bullying, sexual stuff, and fraud. But in my mind, the biggest risk that kids face online at the end of the day, and the biggest reason that parents have to be online with their kids, is teaching kids good critical thinking skills. Because kids don't, they can't, they can't project into the future the ramifications of their actions today. They can't. Kids have to be far better critical thinkers for their own self-preservation today than we ever had to be. We had to watch out for strangers offering us candy as they drove by in cars. That was pretty easy to figure out. The subtleties of the web 2.0 world and social networking are profound.